Welcome to the fifth week. This is the first module. We are going to look at uh, coupled oscillations of what is called the loaded spring. It is also a good point to take stock of what we had been doing. So, we started by looking at simple oscillations and then in order to get more realistic, we added effects due to viscous damping. With oscillations and damping present, uh, we also included the effects due to periodic driving and we saw things like uh, resonances happen, resonances in displacement, in velocity and so on. And then uh, we studied coupled oscillations. Once you say coupled system, you do not worry about what an individual element is doing. You can also talk about that, but largely we are interested in what the entire system is doing as a whole. So, in that context, we introduce the idea of normal frequencies and uh, normal modes, which are basically the patterns of oscillations of coupled system. Now, we want to take that idea further, the idea of coupled oscillations. So, we want to go to a limit where a large number of particles are coupled together and in the appropriate limit, they would maybe form a string for example. So, the starting point for that would be something like what I have uh, drawn here. Okay. So, you have what are called beads uh, and they are tied let us say through a spring. And if you really make a make such a system, which is very easy to do, and if you try and oscillate one of them or just disturb one of them, very soon the one next to it also will get disturbed. And a little later the one sitting next to that will also get disturbed. So, what is happening is the disturbance that you created at let us say at one point here is spreading through the string and that is because there is a uh, coupling. So, if this is oscillating, the one next to it also is going to oscillate and so on. So, again we have same kind of questions that we had faced in the previous chapter. What are the normal modes? So, we can slowly start progressing with 1, 2 and 3, but ultimately we are interested in uh, n particles or n beads. So, we will begin this by uh, considering a small segment of a string and beads. So, what I have here in front of me is three beads uh, which are uh, coupled through a string. Normally, if you have such a system, uh, of course, you will probably try it to walls and so on. So, those are what would be called boundary conditions. So, at this stage, let us not worry about the boundary condition. So, we are just focusing on this segment of the string. When you do not do anything, the string is going to be taut. So, there is some tension uh, T in the string. I am going to assume that there is uh, uniform tension T in the string. There is an equilibrium position when nothing is disturbed. So, that is shown here by the uh, lower line. So, when nothing is disturbed, that is where the system will rest. Now, if I pull one of the beads and leave it, it is going to start oscillating and maybe at some point of time, this is the configuration of the three beads like the one that I have drawn here. So, I am assuming the following things that the beads are equally spaced. So, uh, the spacing between the beads is A. The displacement of each bead is denoted by Y and there is this index R that you will see here, which, which is the index for the number of the bead. So, for example, the middle bead which is shown in the figure is rth bead and on the left side and right side you have y r minus 1 and y r plus 1 th uh, bead. So, like this you could number your beads going from 1 to some large value of n, but we are focusing on some 3 of them in between. And in this configuration, let me also assume that this angle here is theta 1. So, we can now uh, resolve this tension into two components. You would remember that uh, when we were starting the problem of uh, simple harmonic oscillation, we were always looking at the limit of small oscillations. So, here again we are going to look at the limit of small oscillations, which means that 
theta 1 and theta 2 are really small. So, in the limit of theta 1 and theta 2 being small, the two horizontal components which is t cos theta 1 and uh, uh, t cos theta 2, they would be equal and oppositely directed. So, there is no net force on the bead in this horizontal direction, which means that the only possible dynamics for this bead is to go up and down. So, it is in a plane, it goes up and down. So, that is part of our uh, assumptions. So, the net force downward would be some of these two forces T sin theta 1 and T sin theta 2. And here in this case, the tension provides the restoring force and what we have written down as T sin theta 1 and T sin theta 2 is just the uh, restoring force. So, with this we can now write down the equation of motion. So, here I have written down the equation of motion for the rth bead. I have assumed that all the beads have mass m, T of course is the uniform tension uh, in the string. Now, if you go back to the uh, figure that we had seen a uh, while back, you will notice that we can obtain an expression for uh, sin theta 1 and sin theta 2 in terms of these uh, displacements. So, for example, from this figure, it is clear that sin theta 1 would be equal to uh, y r minus uh, y r minus 1 and in the limit of theta being very small theta 1 and theta 2, we can assume that the length has not changed much. So, I will take it as A itself. Similarly, I write an expression for sin theta 2 uh, that would be y r minus y r plus 1 divided by A. Now, all we need to do is to substitute uh, these two expressions back in our equation of motion and remember that this is the equation of motion for the rth particle. So, now I have my equation of motion and uh, the next part is to actually solve this. We are going to adopt the same kind of general technique that we adopted in the last uh, week. I will write by assuming that y r which is the displacement at the rth position is going to of course, be time dependent it will be a r which is amplitude e power i omega t. And similarly, I can write uh, equation for y r minus 1 and y r plus 1. Now, we will substitute uh, these three expressions for uh, the displacement back in our equation of motion. Uh, if you do that, I will get the following equation. It is a simple exercise. So, I urge you to uh, check that yourself. Uh, this equation is often called the fundamental equation and you will see why because from this we could pretty much work out everything uh, that we need. Now, let us uh, check this uh, for the case of a single bead. That is the simplest problem one can think of. Of course, it will be an system without any coupling to anything else, but nevertheless uh, it is a simple case to check. And I will assume that uh, the distance from these two ends is A. So, the string is tied to a rigid uh, wall here at this point. There is actually a bead only at position 1 and if I give it a little bit of disturbance, it is going to oscillate up and down. So, here the boundary conditions are very clear uh, at, at this point where the string is tied to the wall, there are no oscillations, it is quite tight there. So, R is the index for position of the particle, so we have only one particle. So, we will go from 0 to 2 and there is a particle at position 1, 0 and 2 are fixed. Okay. So, the boundary condition that we have taken is a reflection of this fact. Since A0 is 0 and A2 is 0, I am left with the following equation. Now, we know that A1 is the amplitude of the bead at position 1. 
and the amplitude in general is not equal to 0. So, A 1 is not equal to 0 in general. Hence, the rest of the quantities in the bracket should be equal to 0 that is m omega square by t is equal to 0 and this will give me an expression for omega square. So, this will give me 2 t by m a. So, here I have obtained the normal mode frequency for a single particle. So, it is really incorrect to call it normal mode frequency, it is simply the frequency of a one single oscillating uh, bead. Now, let us go to the next level of complexity. So, we look at the fundamental equation, but again let us write the boundary conditions in this case. Now, let us write specific equations for the other two positions which is a bead at position 1 and a bead at position 2. So, let us say r is equal to 1. If I set r is equal to 1 and put in r equal to 1 in this equation, I am going to get the following one. So, all I have done is to simply substitute the value of r uh, from here in this equation and I have got this equation. Now, let us do a similar exercise for r equal to 2. So, simply put the value of r equal to 2 in the fundamental equation. Now, if you remember that our boundary conditions are a 0 equal to 0 and a 3 equal to 0 in which case this term will go away and this term will go away. So, now if you look at the rest of the equations that we have, it is two equations and two unknowns. The unknowns are a 1 and uh, a 2. So, now we just need to solve for this as usual demand that we need non-trivial solutions which means that a 1 and a 2 is not equal to 0. If we do that, uh, we should be able to get two different values of uh, omega square. So, I have two equations and two unknowns. So, I can substitute for this a 1 from here. If I do that, I am going to get 2 minus m omega square a by t whole square into a 2 is equal to a 2. And since a 2 itself is not equal to 0, uh, the quantity here within this square bracket would be equal to 0. Now, that the quantity inside the bracket is equal to 0, so it is of the form like a square minus b square equal to 0. So, I can split it as a plus b into a minus b and that would give me the following uh, equation. And in this case, each of them would individually be equal to 0, in which case I can set each of the term equal to 0 and write an expression for omega square. So, if I do that for let us say this case, it will give me the following uh, expression for omega square. So, let me call it omega 1 square that would be t by m a. And if I set this equal to 0, I am going to get the second uh, normal mode frequency which would be omega 2 square would be equal to 3 t by m a. So, now it was a case of two beads, two oscillating beads and I have two normal mode frequencies. We can also find the normal modes starting from the equations of uh, from the fundamental equations we substituted the boundary conditions and after putting in the boundary condition, this is the two sets of equation that I have. And now to get the normal mode uh, for each of these cases, I need to 
substitute for omega square here. So, let us substitute omega square to be equal to omega 1 square and remember that we have already said that omega 1 square is equal to T by M A. So, this is my first normal mode frequency and in this case now if I substitute omega 1 square equal to T by M A in these two equations you can see what would happen. We have only one equation, so it can be easily satisfied if we choose A 1 to be equal to A 2. So, that would give me a normal mode to be 1 and 1. And similarly, if I do the same uh, kind of analysis uh, for the second normal mode, I will have to substitute omega square equal to omega 2 square which is equal to 3 T by M A. In this case, I will leave it to you to try it out uh, yourself. It is exactly the same uh, way that we uh, did for the first normal mode frequency and if you do it correctly, you should be able to show that A 1 is equal to minus A 2. So, this would correspond to the normal mode that is uh, given by 1 and minus 1. And now, if you want to transform this uh, result in physical terms, it is equivalent to saying that the first normal mode whose normal mode frequency is given by omega 1 square will correspond to both of them will go up together, come down together, go up together and so on. So, that is their pattern of oscillation. On the other hand, in the case of second normal mode frequency, their pattern of oscillation is if one is up, the other one would be uh, down. Now, this is not a viable way of solving it if you have a large number of beads. So, in the next class, we will look at how we can obtain a general solution so that we can scale up obtaining the normal mode frequencies and normal modes themselves even for a general case of n beads uh, which are connected by a string.